What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and today I'm going to show you a couple of methods that I use to create tribal shapes in Illustrator and Photoshop. Dread Labs. So the main takeaway from tribal shapes is that they basically look like lines that have bites of ellipses taken out of them, if that makes sense. And I'm going to show you that in the most simple way. So we're going to try uh, starting out in Illustrator with the most basic shape possible. I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and we're going to draw an ellipse. And for this, I'm going to just press D on my keyboard so that we have a white fill and a black outline. So we kind of can see whatever we're doing and which of these shapes is on top of one another. I'm going to hold all or option on my keyboard and dragging this out. And as you can see, the overlap between here, so this part here, already kind of looks like a tribal shape. And if I select both of them and under the pathfinder, I'm just going to click minus front. And as you can see, this is the very, very basic thing that a tribal shape does, as you can see in the references here. Essentially, this is a line that tapers on both sides with basically some other ellipses taken out of it. So let's just make a new ellipse. And with the rotate tool, I'm going to rotate it around real quick. And if we minus this, as you can see, we're already getting to start have something similar of a tribal shape. So during the rest of this video, I'm going to show you a couple of methods that I use to create more intricate tribal shapes. And later I'm going to move into Photoshop and show you how to do this with the brush in Photoshop. So the first tip is actually use larger circles to punch out main parts of the body of the tribal shape, if it makes sense, and rotate them a little bit. As you can see, if we now made this front ellipse a little bit larger as well as uh, rotate it a little bit and that just gives a more uh, natural looking tribal shape. Another way to achieve this is just draw a line with the pen tool. I'm going to make the stroke size a lot larger and under the stroke menu we're going to click on profile and use this tapered profile. Now if we press shift C on our keyboard we'll get the anchor point tool and we can actually drag on the line to curve it and as you can see if we just finish this and fill it up you can kind of see what's happening. It looks like a tapered line so essentially you can get them in two ways. Let me just immediately show you what I do with these tapered lines in order to make them a little bit more detailed or cool I guess because I'm actually sometimes using using warps to manipulate ellipses to cut shapes out, but I'm also using these to manipulate the lines. So for example, let's go to effect warp arc, and we'll just give this a 50% arc, and you might think, okay, but just, just pushes it up further. But if we grab the rotate tool by pressing R on our keyboard, and we're gonna twist, as you can see, we can get some pretty interesting uh, forms of this. So for example, if we take a look at this one and let's just go to object expand appearance, uh, you'll see that we actually, yeah, this is a pretty interesting looking shape now. And of course, if we just command Z a little bit and make this even thicker and just expand the shape again, as you can see, we still have the path in there as well. We can just delete that. Now we can, for example, use an ellipse to bite out a chunk here. And a nice way to do this is actually uh, using an ellipse tool with the white front color or whatever color your background is. And this basically helps you immediately visualize what is going to be like bitten out of this shape, if that makes sense. So as you can see, it's a little bit hard to see. So you can go to outline view by pressing Control or command Y on your keyboard. You know, get this preview window up. For me, I don't really need it, I think. And because this is like curving, uh, what I would probably do here is, okay, this looks pretty nice, I guess. But what I would probably do here is, let me just rotate this 90 degrees and then we'll go with an arc. And this is a little bit hard to see, so I'm just gonna move it over here. Go back to the arc and we'll do a vertical arc to the right, I guess. <laughs> and then of course we'll expand this appearance again. So now we have this like banana shape, which we can then also use to cut out parts of our uh, tribal here. As you can see, uh, maybe we'll rotate this just a little bit so that it takes some nice decent chunks out of here. And of course, then we can just use the shape builder to, to, to trim off these uh, ellipses. So we'll just select all of them, go to the shape builder tool, and then we'll hold alter option on our keyboard and we'll just drag away at like our excessive shapes and this gives you like a nice speedy looking tribal shape so i hope these tips combined give you a nice basis to start off working on your first tribal shapes in illustrator and now let's move on to photoshop and show you how i do it with the brush tool all right so for the photoshop method i'm just going to use a normal brush with the hardness set to 100 and we can just of course make this as large as we want one thing here i would always advise you to use a drawing tablet when working with brushes in photoshop i don't have one uh, with me at the moment i 
do actually use one when I do my artworks, but I just wanted to show you that it is actually possible to do it without one, but I would advise you to consider buying one if you're really into this. Under the brush settings, uh, what I'm going to do is go to shape dynamics, and if you have a pen tablet, what you want to do is control the size jitter with the pen pressure here. So if we can't control uh, our size with the mouse, uh, this is just this will just have to do. I'm going to make sure that the spacing is set to 1%, and I'm actually going to draw out a shape here. And one tip here, if you are uh, if you are a little bit wonky like me, for example, if I want to draw a, like a smooth line, you can kind of see that it looks a little bit smooth, but you can also just turn up the smoothing here. So if I'm going to set this to 100%, it's going to take a little while for the actual brush to follow my mouse, but this results in smoother edges as you can see. Alright, so now the one trick is of course in Illustrator we use ellipses to get rid of like all of the shapes. What I'm going to do here is use the eraser tool. So I'm just going to make sure that my eraser is also set to 100% hardness and the spacing is set to 1%. And uh, the smoothing is also set to 100% just to make it easier for myself. And I can just start trimming off parts here of our uh, shape here. So we'll just delete this part entirely. And as you can see, the main goal here is to trim off the edge so that there's a small point like ending here. So you, you want to really taper those, uh, those shapes. And this looks a little bit like it's not really sharp enough. So what I would do here is, for example, go and take a bite out here. And perhaps, well, not this close, maybe I'm going to try to do it like this. So this gives you a nice sharp edge as well. So let's try that one more time here. So in the inner part here, I'm just going to take a little chunk out. And here, I'm just going to try and trimming it out this way. And here at the bottom, I'm just also going to move my mouse a little bit more. And you might need to take a couple of tries to achieve this if you don't have a pen tablet like me. But like I said, it is possible. Uh, let's just make the brush a little bit smaller for this part here. chunky boy here maybe I want to take one more bite here to make it a little bit thinner maybe that's too thin let's do this one more time so we'll just move this down here and as you can see like the faster I move my mouse the smoother the motion will be if I set my smoothing to 100% here so just erase this part here and we'll just go like this and of course as you can see Sometimes I'm trimming a lot off, so here in Photoshop I would say make a very large uh, like portion of your brush so because there's going to be a lot erased, I guess. And as you can see we'll be left with some pretty cool tribal shapes that we can do all sorts of stuff with. So yeah guys, there you have it, a couple of methods that I use to create my tribal shapes in Photoshop and Illustrator. So I hope this tutorial was useful to you. If you want to get the project files for these, if you want to play around with these uh, tribal shapes for yourself, you can actually get them by becoming a patron of mine. So thanks to my patrons, I'm actually able to keep up the weekly videos for you guys, because I need to do Dreadlabs full time in order to produce a video every single week. So as a thank you for supporting the channel, by becoming a patron you'll get access to over 100 project files from all of my tutorials over the past years, and these get updated by the month, so you'll get new tutorials and new project files every month as well but you can also cancel anytime if you don't feel like it and if you go one tier up you'll also get access to exclusive videos such as how to start your own clothing brand how to make a death metal logo from scratch as well as how to make a y2k ray flyer if this all sounds interesting to you there's a link down in the description to give more info about becoming a dreadlabs patron so one more time a huge shout out to all of my patrons thank you so much and if you don't want to become a patron it's also completely fine of course leaving a like comment and subscribe on the channel if you haven't already already does a lot so with all of this being said this is tom from dreadlabs tuning out thank Thank you so much for watching and hopefully see you guys in the next video.